Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Father's Day. I didn't care much about Father's Day as a young father. When our first child was born, my wife Sandy quit her job, and it became a struggle for me working paycheck to paycheck. Well, this one Father's Day, I came home from work, and Sandy had bought me a present. There in our living room was this beautiful brown leather recliner that Sandy bought me for Father's Day. I asked her, where did you find the money to buy it? She said, I charged it on the credit card. <laughs> I said, oh. My thoughts were that I just bought me a Father's Day present, <laughs> and now I had to figure out how to pay for it. This made me a bit unhappy, to the point of telling Sandy, do not buy me any more presents, please. I wasn't as smart as Sandy, because a few years later, when my daughter was about three years old, Kimberly climbed up into my lap as I was sitting in that recliner. She laid her head on her chest. And with her little arms hugging me, she said, I love you, Daddy. <laughs> Thinking back, that recliner was probably the greatest gift my wife ever bought me. I'm very proud of the mother Kimberly has become. She's a very close second to her mother. I said I wasn't going to do that, and I did, but no tears came down. <laughs> Father's Day, what is a father? I have a short video from a movie called Parenthood I'm going to play for you. In this video, the mother says to Todd, her new son-in-law, I guess Gary needs a man around. Gary is the mother's son who is having emotional issues and is very rebellious. Todd, her son-in-law, is going to give his memories of his father. Looking lit cigarettes at my head. I guess the boy Gary's age really needs a man around. Yeah. Well, mm. depends on the man. I had a man around. He used to wake me up in the morning by flicking lit cigarettes at my head. Get up and make me breakfast. You know, Miss Buckman, you need a license to buy a dog or drive a car. Hell, you need a license to catch a fish. But don't let any <laughs> be a father. There's a difference. Well, I'm going to pick up Julie. There's a difference between fathering a child and then being a father. In general, any man can father a child. That's the easiest part. Our first child was not a planned child. I wanted to wait five years for marriage. My plan was not God's plan. In April of 1977, Sandy and I left the cold memories of the winter in Michigan behind and flew to Daytona Beach for a week of fun in the sun. Nine months later, in January of 1978, our son was born. <laughs> our second child was planned. Sandy really wanted another baby. This time, it was a bit of a struggle 
And we really had to work at it, if that's what you want to call it. Sandy, Sandy finally conceived after a few months of trying, and in April 1980, our daughter was born. The easy part was over, and now the hard part begins. Why is it that fathers discipline their children and mothers comfort and give them love? It just doesn't seem fair. Proverbs 13, 24 says, Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Proverbs 22, 6 goes on to say, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So it is the punishment and discipline by the father of the children that is a sign of our love for our children. As a child, I never felt my father's love when the belt came off. But as a father, I felt the hurt when I disciplined my children. Discipline and punishment have been handed down by fathers to sons for generations. I remember the story I was told of how my grandfather would tell his misbehaving sons to go outside and cut a willow switch off the willow tree and bring it to him. A willow switch is a branch that is very pliable and was used to strike the backside of the misbehaving child. So which is more painful? going outside to get the switch or the punishment. My father used a belt and I used my hand thinking that I was better for it because I would actually feel the sting in my hand. Switch, belt, or hand, it didn't matter. They were all painful to the heart at the time. And I did not feel love for my children while doing it. But if I did not care how my children acted or what they grew up into, and if I did not discipline them, how could it be said that I loved them? So does God punish us? You bet he does. It started in Genesis Chapter 3, when Adam and Eve were told not to eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. But they did anyway, when they were tempted by Satan. God cursed the ground and said, Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground as dust. The Israelites disobeyed the Lord. And were caused to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Jonah disobeyed the Lord and spent three days in the belly of a big fish or a whale. And the Lord punishes us too. Life is hard. And we sin every day. And the God forgives us. But that does not mean he does not punish us. And just because he punishes us, it doesn't mean that he doesn't love us. When my children were very young, starting to walk and reach for things, we instilled in them that the word no meant pain. We would slap their hand and say the word no. Yes, they did cry because of the sting on their hand from that slap, but as time went on, there was no hand slap necessary. When they would reach for something, we would just say a stern, in a stern voice, no. And they would turn their head and look at you and you would say, no. And then they would walk away. There was a time I took my children to my boss's house and he raved to me the next day about how good they were. He said they didn't have to move anything out of the children's reach. Well, my corporal punishment ended around the age of five when my wife showed me the red imprint of my fingers 
on my son's backside. I was devastated that I did that. I felt ashamed and guilt-ridden that I had allowed my anger to cause that much pain to a small boy. I had become the one thing that I said I would never be, my father. Have you ever thought about that way about God the Father? That he is angry at you and abusive? That when you're working on something and nothing is going right, no matter how hard you try, and you feel God is punishing you or stopping you from your accomplishing your task, and you just say, enough, God. Leave me alone. Our first reading today addresses that. Proverbs 3, 11, and 12. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. Sometimes I think it would have been better to be born a wiser old man and get younger as we age so we would know our father's love and the punishments were for our own good. As I got older and wiser, I found that punishment does not have to be physical. In 1993, when my son was 15, a friend stopped me at a street corner while I was driving home and told me he had seen my son driving my Corvette. I said, no way. He wouldn't do that. The Corvette was an award given to me by Chevrolet to drive for a year. My wife, Sandy, and I were the only ones insured to drive it. Besides that, my son didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> so on Friday night, Sandy and I took our other car to pick up a couple and go out to dinner. We left the Corvette in the driveway, and I set the trip meter to zero. When we returned home, the trip meter showed 7.6 miles. On Saturday morning, my son and one of his friends that had come over were going out the front door, and he said to me, we're going out for a while. And I said, I want you to enjoy yourself today because this is the last time you will be going out for a while. He said, what do you mean? I told him, I know you took the spare keys and drove the Corvette because I set the trip to zero and now it has 7.6 miles on it. So go and enjoy yourself today. He came home early Saturday and I didn't speak to him. On Sunday afternoon, I was still quiet and just reading the paper. My son came to me and said, Dad, you're killing me, not talking to me. I need to know my punishment. Just beat me or something. <laughs> I told him that for the next two months, you will attend youth Bible class after Sunday's church service. My son said, I would rather you just beat me. <laughs> Whether I was right or wrong with his punishment, I felt maybe he would learn something and it couldn't hurt. And besides, there was no anger involved, just love. I am very proud of my son, Nicholas. He has turned out to be a far better, better father than I was. And his faith and knowledge of the Bible far exceeds mine. And he is passing his love of Jesus unto his children. Whatever the means of punishment by my grandfathers, my father, me, or my son and daughter have given to our children, it may not have seemed like we like love at the time, but when I look at all the families today, including those of aunts, uncles, and cousins, I see strong Christian families full of love. That love comes from God and has been passed down through generations. 
Paul's letter to the Galatians in chapter 3 tells us, you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed, your, clothed yourself with Christ. First John chapter 3 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. With that, I referred you back to our second reading on page 6 from Hebrews 12:7. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his sons. For what children are not disciplined by their father? God is treating you as his children. In Greek, the word for treating is prospero, which by definition means to bring to to offer. God treats Jesus as a son and that he offers him as a sacrifice for us, for our sins. We know that John 3.16 is probably the most well-known verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God punishes Jesus. God allows Jesus to be punished in our stead for our sins. Just as any father punishes his children. But this was not a willow switch or a belt or a slap. Jesus was flogged. He was whipped. Think seriously about your own bodies. Close your eyes if you have to. And what, it, what this means. The flesh on his back was ripped open. He was physically beaten. They struck him in the face. They struck him on the head with a staff. They pushed a th crown of thorns in his head. They pounded nails, more like spikes, through the hands and feet. Push down hard with your fingernail on the palm of your hand and just imagine how that must have felt as the nails go through your hand. This was more than punishment. This was torture. It's a wonder Jesus wasn't already dead by the time the cross was raised. Then Jesus hung on that cross for approximately six hours with blood dripping from his body. Can you picture it? Jesus said, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And that's what Jesus did for you. And love is why, Jesus, is why God allowed this to happen. It's all about love for you. So when you come to communion today, I ask that you look up at the cross and thank God the Father for sending his son Jesus to take the punishment for your sins and for the eternal life that you have been promised by your faith in Jesus Christ. In Ephesians 6, 4, it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Fathers, or parents, are commanded not to ag agitate or irritate their children. In practice, Exasperation means avoiding unfair and cruel behavior or blatant favoritism. Simply put, godly fathers are not to push their children toward anger. Instead, fathers are given a positive command to bring them up 
In other words, Christians are expected to be highly involved in raising their children. First is training, which is discipline. Discipline involves learning self-control and the ability to restrain strain from personal desires in order to do what's right. Second is the instruction of the Lord. We should be involved in teaching our children about God's ways through both education and by our example. There was a quote that I read from Mother Teresa that says, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Fathers and parents, by loving your family, you are changing lives. Amen.